a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie tank. This one's part 57, valve gear reassembly. In a previous episode, I did mention that I wasn't going to show the valve gear reassembly because most of it would just be shots of my large hands covering the work, like this. I decided to show some of the assembly because it is quite important. The first thing to look at is the die block in the lifting arm. Initially I left this in the lifting arm so I wouldn't lose it, but now it's time to remove it and fit it back in position in the radius rod. But first, a bit of oil on the expansion link bearing, I think. You will see me lubricating the parts frequently because don't forget this has been through the parts washer and the steam cleaner, so any bearing surfaces on the chassis will be very dry. And one more time, the only spanner I could find that fitted these nuts was one of the cheap laser cut sets from Blackgates Engineering. I'm really glad I bought these. In no time at all, the expansion link is in place with the radius rod sandwiched in between it. And before I fit the combination lever, which connects to the radius rod, I thought I would just clean up the valve fork because it was a bit grimy. Once again, I used the Proxon motor tool with the wire brush. If you've been following this series, you will know that both of the combination levers were bent. And now I'm taking a closer look at the valve fork, I think I know why. This is the underside of the valve fork and you can clearly see that it's been filed to give more clearance for the combination lever to move. And I would assume that when the engine was first built and put together, the top of the combination lever fouled the valve fork, which would explain why the combination lever was bent. If when I put the engine back together and give it a test run, the combination lever bends again, you can discount this has been the problem. Once again, before assembly, plenty of oil. Probably a bit too much, but it's better to have too much oil than too little. Unless, of course, it's inside a car engine, when having too much oil is definitely not a good idea. But because steam engines are far more primitive than internal combustion engines, and all the working parts are stuck outside the engine, not sat in an oil bath, then lubrication is essential, as steam engine lubrication is normally a total loss system. In this clip I'm refitting the three small bolts that hold the expansion link bracket onto the main motion bracket. And in case you're wondering, yes I shortened them before I fitted them because originally they were far too long. In this clip I'm refitting the die block in the radius rod. And here I'm fitting the pin that holds the die block in place. And wonders never cease, my nut spinner actually fits the bolt, that's a good thing. I'll just try a spanner to check the size of the other side. Yes, this one's OK, so now I can tighten the pin and that holds the die block in place. And that's one side done. Does it work? I'll just give it a try. And yes, it seems to work quite well. It's very free running and that should be fine. I noticed that the lifting arm was a bit dirty in places, so I'm using my wire brush in the Proxon motor tool just to clean it up and I finished the job off by using a piece of Scotch-Brite. What I will be doing when I've finished the reassembly is go around the entire engine and using a very small paintbrush I will touch in any damaged paint. In this clip I've turned the engine round ready to do the other side and as you can see everything's running freely. Although this is nothing to do with the valve gear it was part of the job as I turned the engine round and I'm removing the valve chest cover so I can fit some 6BA bolts through into the smoke box saddle. Thanks to the magic of video, the job's done. Not only is the smoke box saddle bolted in place, I've also fitted the valve gear. You can see that I'm using my nut spinner to tighten the three bolts that hold the expansion link bracket to the main motion bracket. Now it's time to fit the die block to the lifting arm and radius rod. For some reason the thread on the pin was a bit tight, so I'm using my scriber in the nut spinner just to give me a bit of mechanical help. In this clip I'm just having a feel at the movement of the valve gear. As you can see as I move the expansion link, everything moves freely. The valve rod isn't moving because everything is just flapping about in the breeze. But when I hold the combination lever, you can see that the valve moves in and out. So everything's looking good. Apart from the colour of the chassis, it looks a really strange colour under the new LED lighting. This colour is buffer beam red, not bright orange. I need the bright light for maximum detail and lack of shadows. When I turn out the video lighting, it looks just the way it's supposed to look. 
And that's it for this episode. Stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.